According to some data, by the middle of this year, the number of liquidated alligators may exceed 60 units, writes BulgarianMilitary.com. The article notes that these losses amount to approximately 30 to 35 percent of the operational fleet of KA-52 helicopters. As the most modern helicopter in its arsenal, the KA-52 was designed to engage a wide range of targets, including armoured vehicles and fortified positions, the article says. The journalists added that such an increased level of deployment of the alligators increases their exposure to Ukrainian air defence systems, especially the Stinger and Igla man-portable air defence systems, which are actively used by Ukrainian troops. As of mid-2024, the Russian Air Force has faced significant losses with at least 12 aging MIL Mi-28 Havoc attack helicopters downed in Ukraine. These include notable incidents such as a Mi-28 shot down in Luhansk in May 2022 and another destroyed by the Ukrainian Security Service using a drone over Russia's Kursk region in August 2024. The KA-52 Alligator, thanks to its twin counter-rotating main rotor system, offers superior agility compared to the traditional tail rotor setup of the Mi-28. This coaxial rotor design enables the KA-52 to perform complex maneuvers with impressive stability and responsiveness, making it especially effective in low-altitude flight and hovering. Yet, despite this agility advantage, the KA-52 has experienced greater losses in Ukraine for reasons beyond its maneuverability. The KA-52 is built for direct engagement of ground targets, often navigating environments filled with air defense systems. This cutting-edge helicopter is frequently used for high-risk missions such as tank hunting and close air support, bringing it dangerously close to Ukrainian anti-aircraft capabilities. Unlike the KA-52, the Mi-28 tends to be deployed in more cautious, standoff roles. The General Staff of the Armed Forces of Ukraine reported that as of September the 11th, during the full-scale war, the Russian Federation had lost 328 helicopters. In addition, 368 enemy aircraft had been destroyed. Last summer, the media wrote that Russia had a shortage of professional pilots against the backdrop of the war against the Ukrainians. Information appeared that everyone was allowed to take the controls. In Central African Republic, a mineral-rich but impoverished country that has been in conflict since 2013, the US and Russia are vying for influence. In recent years, Russia has emerged as the security partner of choice for a growing number of governments in Africa, displacing traditional allies such as France and the US Moscow aggressively expanded its military cooperation by using mercenaries like Wagner who have operated in at least half a dozen countries since around 2017. Widely accused of human rights abuses, they're tasked with protecting African leaders and in some cases helping fight rebels and extremists. After Russian mercenary leader Yevgeny Prigozhin launched a rebellion against his country's top military leaders, officials from Central African Republic sought the help of private U.S. security firm Bancroft Global Development. Washington-based Bancroft is a non-profit working in nine countries, five of them in Africa. Bancroft's presence has not been without its criticisms. Rights groups say a lack of transparency about the firm's operations has fostered an atmosphere of distrust in a country already rampant with armed actors. This year, anti-American protests erupted outside the U.S. Embassy in Bangui and local youths formed the committee to investigate U.S. activities to monitor Bancroft's movements. Tresser Adum, a pro-Russian activist working for the Ministry of Youth, told the AP as he took photos with a statue of Russian soldiers in Bangui, the goal of this committee is to control what Bancroft does in. Some statements were released, and we think that Bancroft didn't respect the required procedures. That's why we decided to put in place this committee, in order to control its actions. The tensions in Central African Republic are a window into a larger battle playing out across the continent between Moscow and Washington. Central African Republic was one of the first places Russian mercenaries entered. Many in the country credit Wagner with fighting back rebels who tried to take over Bangui in 2021. Russia is refurbishing a military base some 50 miles from Bangui. Alexander Baikantov, Russia's ambassador to Central African Republic, said the base will improve the country's security. Fidely Gwanjika, 
advisor to President Faustin Archange to Adera, said the base aims to have 10,000 fighters by 2030 to engage with more African nations. We need the help of all countries in the world in search of peace and justice in order to have the people of the Central African Republic live in peace and develop as other nations around the world, he said from his home in Bangui. In Central African Republic, it's still unclear how much sway the Russian state has with the mercenaries, who are beloved by many and embedded in society, brewing beer and visiting markets. Still, they largely keep to themselves, walking through streets with faces covered and driving in unmarked cars. For many, Prigozhin was a national hero. At the monument of Russian soldiers in Bangui, people lay flowers at its feet paying respects, a year after his death. For most people here, there's little interest in squabbles among foreign nations. There are problems between the Americans and Russians, but that doesn't matter to us, said Jean Lewis Yet, who works at Bongi's market. All we want is security. L'objectif de ce comité, c'est de contrôler ce que, ce que font les bons coffres en RCA. Parce que nous, euh, il y a des communiqués qui, qui, qui ont été publiés. Et donc nous pensons que Bancop n'a pas respecté les procédures normales pour, la, pour euh, rentrer en bus africain. Voilà pourquoi nous avons dit, nous allons mettre en place ce comité pour contrôler ces actions. Déjà, on a 12 000 soldats des Nations Unies euh, qui sont chez nous, hein, donc l'abondance de biens ne nuit pas. Nous avons besoin euh, du concours de tous les pays du monde et pris de paix et de justice pour que le peuple centrafricain vive dans la quiétude, dans la paix et se développe aussi comme d'autres États au monde. Il y a un problème euh, entre les Américains ou les Russes là-bas. Nous, les, les, ici, là, ça ne nous intéresse pas tellement parce que nous, ce que nous voulons, c'est le développement de, de notre pays. Donc, on veut que si les Américains viennent pour nous sécuriser, pour sécuriser le pays et pour faire développer aussi le pays, ça nous intéresse. Nous, ce qu'on veut, c'est la, la, la sécurité.